Hello and welcome to Project Eden. I've gotten pretty far uh, and I'm pretty much done with uh, my hydrogen bubbler. I also did something I haven't really seen people use it for that I will hope will be really effective and kind of really neat way to solve uh, the cooling system in my base, right? So what I'm doing is I'm pumping out uh, the oxygen out here. This oxygen is going to be really cold because it's just turned to gas from uh, liquid oxygen, right? And pumping it out in this area. But I also done some pipe work here. So this is absolute. So I've, I've kind of isolated this area, right? And from here, I'm going to pump out the oxygen I need to the rest of the base. So that will provide quite a lot of cooling. But apart from that, I'm going to pump to not make this go too cool or the air pumped out from here cool the base too much. I pump. I'm gonna pump from some hot oil through here, right? Or some oil through here. Uh, that's gonna warm this area up a bit, but primarily cool down the oil a lot. And that oil I will be able to use to cool down areas in need of extra cooling. Like, for example, this is going to be my uh, crude oil to natural gas uh, plant. And I'm gonna boil my polluted water here on top. That's gonna get uh, steamed by the hot uh, natural gas coming up through this this area, right? So I'm gonna steam it here, but I also need some way to cool it down to, to water. So that's what I'm gonna use it for, right? Uh, I also got pretty far with my work on um, uh, where I'm gonna produce all the polluted oxygen. So in here, I'm gonna have uh, mealwood uh, that is going to, to rot or the meal ice is going to rot and turn to polluted dirt that's going to produce some polluted oxygen but primarily I'm going to have uh, a lot of morbs in here and they, I need about 20 to secure my polluted oxygen generation right because they they make like 15 uh, grams a second and uh, Duke use like 100 right and I'm going to have three drips living here any extra polluted oxygen I re generate here I'm going to, to give to my puffs. These are going to be enclosed later on, but I haven't gotten to that yet, right? So they're going to get, get inside the, the enclosed space, right? Um, and I can use the slime they will produce for two things, right? Either I can give them some uh, extra food, um, some nicer food in form of mushrooms, or I could uh, use it for some extra polluted water if need be, right? But when I was started working on both the natural gas plant or the crude oil to natural gas and this area I realized I had a problem I had to solve first and that was that the area was really cold right uh, most of the area was like minus 30 degrees some areas was this one the area down here was like minus 60 degrees uh, mostly due to when I test run this one and open it up later on to edit it I run into some some problem of a lot of coal leaking out right so if I would have started with spawning morbs up here or putting slicks this here, they would probably have frozen to death. So I had to solve this. And the way I solved it was a space heater or steroids, right? And it's pretty much a liquid tepidizer, or it is a liquid tepidizer with some logical circuits. And uh, I used the same logical circuit setups for my, my boiler uh, down in my main base where I boil uh, crude oil or, or my crude oil to natural gas, right? So let's see, here we go, right? So I have this one set up as well with some optimization circuits, right? And what it does is I can control the up and down time of the liquid tepidizer exactly the way I want it. And exploit the fact how a liquid tepidizer works out of water. So if we look at this one, right? Um, here I will control the downtime and the downtime in this case is 100 seconds and the uptime is only 2 seconds. So this is very energy efficient, right? So even though it consumes almost 1000 watts, I'm only using a 50th or a, like a, the, the, this, this uh, uh, watts uh, divided by 50, right, in energy. This is really, really energy efficient. Now I know people have a bit of different opinion of using exploits like this in a game. I play personally a lot of multiplayer games and exploits in multiplayer games are kind of bad because it can be game breaking and it's not fair, right? because they force everyone to use the exploit, right? But in a single player game like this, uh, especially the ones about building, I don't really think it matters because me using an exploit in the game to, to get some cool effect out of it, right? Doesn't really uh, affect anyone, as, uh, anyone else's experience, right? Um, it's rather that in building games like this, using exploits like how a liquid tepidizer works out of water or how uh, water cools down areas more than they, they really should when you get a drip down effect, right? Uh, because every little drop of water, even a few grams, cool down uh, the area it hits just as much as if it was a full tile of water, right? So, but using those exploit or using stuff in a way that the developers might not have intended uh, to, to create really cool stuff, 
I, th I think it's kind of a really fun part of the game, right? Finding ways that the developers didn't think about to, to, to make cool machinery, right? And, and most importantly, it really doesn't lessen the experience from other players for other players, right? So for example, when I start with this machinery down here, I actually run into a problem where it broke, right? And I had it running so hot before I actually nerfed it with the logical circuits here. I had it running so hot that the carbon dioxide here actually solidified. I think it was like, it was hard to see because it really spiked, but like maybe seven or 8,000 degrees, right? So I got like way too hot. So I still have like a lot of uh, uh, potential um, uh, potential uh, power I can get out of this thing or, or potential conversion because I'm actually running it at almost half speed, like as much downtime as, down as uptime, right? So I can get a lot more out of that one. And I also plan to do that up here, try to see how, how far I can push it, right? Um, so I think this is as far as I've gotten so far. I, I put this temp shift plate, they're only temporary, I'm gonna remove these later on. But I put this temp shift plate here to spread out the heat from this machinery a bit more in the base. It doesn't really seem to work that well, so I don't know how much they help, but well, I put them there so they can as well stay. Now, next time I hope I'll uh, start spawning more orbs here and then I will hopefully have the temperature up enough. Up enough. I also got some serious work down here on my crude oil to natural gas plant, right, with the slick sticks going and everything like that. Uh, hope you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you in the next episode. All right, cheers.